In this video, I'm going to be dishing all of the details about my experience with the Creator Series Episode 1. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Andre Brown and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be diving deep and giving you all of the behind the scenes information about my experience on the Creator Series Episode 1. Now, if you haven't seen Episode 1 yet, just know that this video is going to be full of spoilers, so you might want to go watch that first. I'll link it down below so you can go check that out. But if you're still here, I'm assuming that you don't care about any spoilers, so I'll just get right into it. First things first, if you're not familiar with the show, the show is hosted by Sal Sincata, who is an international wedding and portrait photographer. I've been following Sal since early on in my career. I've always admired his work and I've had the pleasure of working with him in many different facets over the past few years. Last year, Sal and the team over at Sincata & Co. launched this show, The Creative Series, which is a photo competition for photographers. Basically, the premise is there are 10 photographers all competing for one prize and each week somebody gets eliminated and they go home with the exception of week one where there are three people that go home. Now, season two is currently airing and I was blessed with the pleasure of being a contestant on season two. Now, as a photographer on the show, we all have 10 minutes to be able to perform whatever the challenge is for that week. Sometimes it's even less, it might be eight minutes, five minutes, just all whatever crazy concoction that Sal comes up with for that particular week. But ultimately, there's some sort of challenge involved, whether it's one light, gels, or whatever the case may be. You can check out some of the different things that happen inside of season one. I don't want to give away any spoilers about what's going to happen moving forward in season two. So as the day starts prior, you don't know what the model looks like what they're wearing, what their hair, makeup, or anything like that is before you really go into the shooting process. After the challenge is delivered to us, then we have to go in and pick numbers to see who goes in what order, one through 10, or just depending on how many people are left in the competition at that period of time. So if you're the unfortunate photographer that picks number one, that's crucial because you're the very first person up. You don't have any time to be able to think about what it is that you want to shoot or to get rid of any jitters that you might have with just starting the day of filming. But to me, being in the back of the pack, being the last person to shoot, then that can be just as detrimental because now you have time to overthink whatever it is that you're going to shoot as opposed to just being creative in the moment and coming up with something good without again overthinking the process. Now, after all of the photographers have gone, the judges go into deliberation. They look at each individual image and then they determine one who's the winner and then who's going to be going home that particular week. Now, if you've been following me for any amount of time, then you know that I am hugely passionate about competition. I've been blessed to have won a number of awards from a number of different organizations here inside of our industry. And I just find competition to be fun. But the difference between this competition and the other competitions that I tend to enter on any other occasion is that usually when I'm shooting, I'm not thinking about competition. Once competition time comes, I look through the images that I've shot throughout the year and figure out what I would submit in what category. With the creator series, you have 10 minutes to connect with the model, figure out your lighting. For this season, we use backgrounds here on episode one. So you pick your backdrop, you pick your lighting, you pick your camera, you pick your lenses, and then you go in and shoot. Now for me, someone who is a more slower, more methodical shooter, I might need 10, 15 minutes to just kind of warm up, get to know the model, figure out what the what the quirks are with the model, what's his or her strengths or weaknesses and that sort of thing. But with the creator series, you get none of that. And again, with that order of how you uh, chose to, to go in for the actual show, that could be a gift or a curse. If you chose number one, 
then obviously you have to jump in right in the groove and you can't think about what it is that you would want to do for your shoot. But you also get a model that one, you don't know, two, is kind of cold in terms of like being, you know, warmed up and ready to shoot. So now you have to go through that process of working out all of the kinks with the models, so on and so forth. At least that's my thought process behind it. Now the flip side of that is being the last person, especially on day one, where your photographer number 10, nine other people have already shot with the model prior to that. Everybody broke and had lunch. So maybe the model has the itis after it's all said and done. And for episode one, I was number 10. Now our model for episode one's name was Brooklyn. Sweet girls, truly a pleasure to work with. And when it was my time to go, I went through, pick my lenses, pick my lighting. I had a plan of what it was I was going to shoot. But you know what they say, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. And I got punched in the face. Not because of any one particular challenge. I didn't have any issues with lighting or anything like that. But the whole time, like I'm just in my head, you know, shooting, trying different things. One, just trying to be different, trying not to just do the most basic of basic to, to get by, right? My initial thought was, hey, I wanna go in and I wanna knock it out of the park. But as that clock starts to tick down and then you got Sal in your ear, you know, reading off the clock, right? It makes it a completely different experience. Some might say, oh, 10 minutes, one photo, that's nothing. It's, it's not, it's a lot more difficult than what one might think. And I remember watching season one and looking at the challenges and thinking to myself, I could never, could never do this. I don't even know why these people signed up for this because 10 minutes to shoot and then 30 minutes to edit. Like I, I had no idea what I was in for. Now you might be saying to yourself, if you thought that, then why would you sign up for in the first place? And it's just for the challenge of it all. It's granted there is a prize at the end, but it's for fun. Yeah, you have to give up X amount of days and time to be able to go out there and do it, but it's fun. It's a good opportunity to be able to stretch yourself beyond your comfort zone, which I know me, I tend to have a problem with. Again, I'm methodical about anything that it is that I do. So coming into this was no different. I knew that I wanted to be able to go in, just create solid images and just get to the next round. So after everybody's done shooting, again, I was the last, Sal comes into the room and he drops off the cards and we start going through the editing process. Now remember, this is a 30 minute edit. You call and you edit, you have 30 minutes in order to be able to get there. So as I'm culling through the images, I see things that I like, some things that were more traditional beauty, right, with the crop. I know some people made a big deal about the crop portion. I had some images, I had a lot of images that I shot that was with the crop. But ultimately, I settled in on an image where I thought the model looked best. I thought the technique in terms of lighting and everything was super solid. So that's what I went with. Now, the problem was I was stuck between two images. I like more of the body in one where, you know, she kind of had a little bit more attitude, but then the other one, the body shape just wasn't there as much, but the face was perfect. Now, here is where I f***ed up. Side note, little shameless plug that I'll throw here in the middle of the video. If you're a photographer who wants to learn more about light, then join me for my lighting workshop November the 11th and 12th here in Atlanta. We'll be covering all things lighting from lighting with off-camera flash, studio portraits with constant light, as well as more creative lighting styles with using things like gels and that sort of thing. So if you're looking to level up your photography lighting, whether that be in studio or on location, then I'll left the link down below and I hope to see you there. But anyway, Back to the creative series. Now, I like to tell people all the time that I'm not a great editor. You're not gonna see me do anything super outlandish with my edits because I don't know how to do it. All of these composites and all of that, I, 
I don't know. I know how to do basic composites, but I don't know what possessed me to think I got 30 minutes to edit. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to completely swap this head from this photo, put it on here, take the eyes from this other photo and put it on here. And then I'll end up with the perfect image. I said to myself in my mind, I'll spend five minutes at this. And if it doesn't work in the five minutes, then I'll abandon it and just edit the initial image that I was going to edit and then move on from there. Apparently, that's not what I did. The next thing you know, Sal comes into the room and he says, you guys have five minutes. Now, if you know Sal, you know, Sal's a funny guy, right? And initially, I thought he was playing and I kind of chuckled a little bit. He's like, no. You guys got five minutes. Now I'm in oh shit mode because apparently I've spent the last 25 minutes culling, head swap, eye swap, doing all of this crazy stuff that ultimately ended up being unsuccessful when it was all said and done. Now I have five minutes left. I haven't touched skin, haven't cleaned up background. I haven't, you know, lifted shadows, absolutely nothing for me to deliver an image. So then I start to scramble. Um, I'm in there, I'm in Lightroom, and I'm, I'm doing my thing, right? Trying to get everything dialed in, move over to Photoshop, going in, hitting the skin, removing blemishes, dodging and burning, doing all of this crazy stuff. And then I hear the 20 second countdown. Bruh. This dude is counting down 20 seconds before we have to export these files to our card and I'm shitting bricks that there's still so much more to do on this image and in that moment at the 20 second mark I've thought about all of the things that I had to do to complete the image at least complete it the way that I wanted to complete it and I literally almost said F it like I'm just gonna give up I 100% thought that I was gonna be going home. But something inside me just said, just get as much of it done as you possibly can and then get a product that's gonna be good enough to get you through to the next round. Like literally guys, when I tell you I thought I was going home, I thought I was going home. I saved the car to the image, delivered it to him just in time with so much defeat, so much defeat in me because I knew that in terms of the edit, there were things that I could have done better. There was a couple things that I missed in terms of like skin. I wanna say there might've been like, you know, something, you know, I, I did get the background in like right at the end, at the five second mark, I got the background, you know, fully cleaned up because I wanted to deliver the best image that I could possibly deliver. But handing in that card when it was all said and done, I just knew that I was going home. I think I may have even said that inside of the confessional. Speaking of which, we had like a little, you know, recorder to go around and record BTS. And all of that BTS is available on the Canon YouTube page. So if you've been watching the creator series and haven't gone over to the Canon page to check out the BTS, then shame on you. Head on over there and go check it out. Show Cannon some love. But anyway, you can see that BTS, I'm not sure what they used or what they didn't in terms of, you know, what I was saying in the confessional, but it, it was crazy. I thought I was going home. So we get to deliberation. I'm standing there. I'm like, I'm multi-international award-winning photographer, Andre Brown, educator, master of light, all of this stuff, right? And I'm going home on the very first day of photo competition, and I love photo competition. So Sal's up there, he's saying his spiel, everything that he, that he needs to record in order to lead up to the deliberation portion, and then they reveal image number one and it pops up on the screen. I didn't even recognize it. I didn't even realize it was my image. 
that's how focused on the fact of not being the winner or the fact that I was going home. That's how focused I was on it at that particular time. I didn't recognize my own image when it came up. So I was fortunate enough to get some glowing reviews about the lighting and the posing and you know all of that great stuff. And much to my surprise, not only did I get to stick around for another week, but I also won and I won a 30 by 40 metal or canvas from H&A's Color Lab, which I'm excited to get in so I can put it up here on the wall. And once I do get that in, I'll show you guys in some of the videos so that you can check it out. I love h and Color Lab. That's my lab of choice. I've been using them for about a year and a half, primarily because the team over there is just, just wonderful people. They have awesome products, which is what we need for our customers, but I'm a people person. And if you provide good service and you treat people good, then I'll 100% do business with people like that over anybody else any day of the week. So if you're looking for a new lab, which you should be, come on over to h and Color Lab. I don't get any commission. I don't, I don't have it like that. I'm not on that level, but go check out h and and check out the amazing products and stuff that they have there. I use just about everything from there. Albums, my favorite, which is the Classic Modern. That's a wall portrait. I use their acrylics, tons of other products. Go check it out. But this isn't an h and H commercial, but do go and check out their products. But yes, ultimately, I'm happy that I won that episode, but I thought I was going home, guys. I thought it was a wrap. I knew my inbox would just be full of my friends and colleagues like, dude, you went home day one? Like, what's going on? Which, you know, shout out to the people that did go home day one. Somebody's got to go home, right? And it's unfortunate. Nobody wants to go home day one. Big ups to those creators for coming out and competing. You know, yeah, you went home, but keep your head up. We all have our good days and our bad days. I thought I had a terrible day and it just so happened to be my day I came out on top. So if you haven't seen the Creator Series Episode 1, Season 2, then go check it out. Go do that right now. After this, I'll link it here in the end card, but be sure to go and check out episode two, which is gonna be coming up on Monday. Go see the new challenge for the week because that shit was hard. And see what myself and the other creators were able to come up with for that episode and stick around and see who won. But that wraps it up for this video. I'll be back on Monday posting another video about my experience inside of episode two. But for those who saw the episode, if you like my image or if you didn't like my image, comment down below. I would love to know who you thought would have the best image for episode one and who went home that you think should have stayed and who you thought stayed that should have gone home. Again, that wraps it up for this video. I thank you guys for coming out. And if you aren't already, I invite you to join me inside of my private Facebook group where we can talk all things photography and you can take part in the monthly challenges that I have inside of my group. And I have that link down below for you here. But as always, be sure to come back and check me out in the next video.